Hello, for every single day of the last six months, half a year, I have been every day diligently tracking what I wear in an app. The reason is because one, I said I would in a previous video. Alrighty, I'm hitting the plus sign. Add clothes. Ooh, I gotta take a lot of pictures. But two, I think many of us have the goal of simplifying our wardrobe, making every single item in our wardrobe work harder for us. We wanna save money by not buying clothes on a whim. And so instead of approaching this in a more abstract way, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to have the data, the cold hard facts, get you closer to those goals. Let us begin. A quick recap, six months ago, I posted a little video essay. It was about the harms of the fashion industry. In addition to my own personal frustration on how much brain space clothing was taking up in my life. What to wear, what to buy. I hate that feeling when the word sale comes at you out of nowhere and you're like panicking, trying to make a rushed decision that you hopefully won't regret. I went through the process of uploading my entire wardrobe item by item into an app called A Closet. This is not sponsored. And have since actually committed to tracking my outfits every single day in this app. And now here I am with my promise to report back to you on the findings. <music> Now this app has your stats broken down into utilization and clothes. In my previous video on this topic, I already shared my clothes data. You get that as soon as you finish uploading your wardrobe, so it's kind of nice little reward up front for doing the work. For example, back then I learned that 44% of my wardrobe is tops, which I took personally as a reason to check myself before I buy more tops, but then also to remind myself to not be so lazy when I go thrifting, because I think when you're lazy, you don't want to try things on and tops are the easiest to get a sense of whether or not they fit. Today, however, we are here for the utilization stats to read me into smithereens. Now, if you were like me to upload your entire wardrobe to an app and track your outfits for six months, so like a whole proper season, if you are like me living in a place that has like four distinct seasons, what do you think your closet utilization would be? Do you think you would be under 50%, over 50%? Lock in your answers, take a guess. I'm sitting at 52%. It's just a number, but it doesn't feel very efficient to me. It kind of hurts. Below the 52%, it shows me the items that are hidden deep in the closet, as in over the last six months, I have not touched them once. A few of them actually are things that I have DIY'd, which also doesn't feel good. So um, let's try on some of these data proven <laughs> losers. Least, least popular DIYs, least popular DIYs. <laughs> While I pull those items out, I'm gonna give a quick thank you to Birch Living for sponsoring this video. We have a Birch Living mattress in our room as well as Marla's room, and right now they have a Memorial Day sale. Their Memorial Day sale is running now. They will be offering 25% off for a limited time. Check out their site if you want more details and give you a little more background on Birch. And so Sagwa is like perfectly hiding behind me. <laughs> If you missed this makeover video, we recently did a museum theme transformation to Marla's bedroom. She's got Da Vinci, Michelangelo, my mom's paintings, a modernist mobile, a touch of botany, and her own birch mattress for when she's done with her crib. Birch makes non-toxic, natural, and organic mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. We love our birch mattress, and then we were super excited to find out they also had a birch kids line. The cool thing about this mattress is that it is two-sided. There's a firmer side and a softer side, which was designed especially for growing kids ages three to 12. The Birch Kids Natural Mattress is also made with certified safe, non-toxic, organic, and natural materials. This mattress has already been well-loved by Marla, by Sakwa, and also by us when we come here to read with her. Definitely our favorite features are that coming out of the bag, there's no harmful off-gassing as well, the two-sidedness so that it can be suitable for Marla's development, but also last us many, many years. So as you can see, we love our Birch Kids mattress and we think you would too. If you or your little one is looking for a new bed, definitely check out Birch. As I mentioned, their Memorial Day sale is running now and you can get 25% off for a limited time. But even if you miss it, you can always click my link below for 20% off. Thanks Birch Living for sponsoring this part of the video. Starting with this black bell flare sleeve turtleneck, the hole is a very tight fit. Honestly, I'm generally 
quite happy with the way this fits. I think maybe just like the flare sleeve was something trendy, but not something that I really resonate with. One thing that I did while sewing this that I really appreciated was I actually still made it a complete sleeve on the inside. A lot of the flare sleeves that you could buy online would totally miss this section. And then it's so neither here nor there. It like doesn't actually keep you warm, but it's way too hot to wear in any type of summer scenario. I want to keep it, but the data says it's not working for me. Next is this brown checkerboard style knit turtleneck. Whew. I loved this fabric when I picked it out. The brown checkerboard was just like very trendy. It's like ever so slightly sheer. It's also complicated because with this turtleneck, I definitely stuck the landing in terms of finishing the raw edges. I used to not really know how to finish knit edges, but I was really happy with the way I did the sleeves and the bottom. Why didn't I wear this? Okay, I definitely feel a lot better about this one than I did with the black flare. This turtleneck for sure can stay. Although I kind of want to fix the back of this turtleneck a little bit. Ooh, proof there was still room for growth. Finishing off the turtleneck section is this turtleneck dress. Does this mean that I'm banned from sewing turtlenecks? <laughs> This one, I tried to make it extra long so I could wear it flipped down. I also tried to do a little bit of like a lettuce hem. This is the dress that I wore when I shared with you all that I was expecting a baby. Got this fun little adjustable gathered side detail. Okay, I think I went for a looser fit, but in reality, I would have liked this more if I had committed to the slimmer fit. And maybe just because at the time I was starting to show with my pregnancy, I was feeling a little and unsure how slim fit I wanted things to be. I'm gonna sit on those modification potentials and see if it changes my mind about this. Because I do love the color a lot. This is the only one out of the least worn that is a thrift flip. So this used to be a baggier pistachio green sweater and I had a video where I slimmed down the sleeves, changed the shape of the neckline, took the excess fabric from the bottom and turned it into this fun little crisscross in the front. Mm. Okay, I have a theory about this one, which is that because it's crop length, requires a little bit of midriff showing. Maybe I just wasn't feeling that hot about my midriff over the last season because I don't have anything against the color. It's such a pleasant pastel green. I even got this like off-center wrap-round situation figured out. Okay, next item. A lot of green going on. This dress was made back when I was reaching my like Ali Wong stand-up special levels of pregnancy. Ooh, the bump was bumping. There's a tricky thing about making clothes for YouTube that sometimes I might choose patterns or colors that are louder than what I gravitate towards just because it looks way better on camera, it'll catch the eye in photographs. That's something that came to mind whenever I realized I wasn't really wearing this dress much. If you guys remember how this dress was built, this front panel had a crazy shape before it was sewn and it was so that this ruching achieved this like wraparound effect where like it looks even better the more bump that is behind it. And if you guys can see, I was really proud of this like little tulip hem thing. <laughs> This feels a little more party than everyday life. And I think that's part of why this doesn't get worn. Um, also, I have this crisscrossing band feature in the back and it is definitely looser now that there is no more baby in the belly. Yeah, something about this tie-dye. It's like cabana party, drink in hand. But like, look, I even did the thumb holes. I mean, had all the bases covered. Okay, and the last item on my you did not wear this all season list. If you weren't here for the tutorial where I made this, you contextually have no background on what the heck is this creation. As wild as this jacket looks, it actually has a lot of elements that I'm personally really, really proud of. I think it's my first time doing a fully lined jacket, uh, my first time putting buttons on a fitted jacket, and my first time doing this cute little cuff, which looks kind of like bubble tea. 
lovely. I'm not gonna do it the other way. But stylistically, I don't know. It looks kind of like I should be riding a horse somewhere. I think at the end of the day, this is why I gravitate towards making more everyday items. Because as fun as it is to make these more outlandish styles, okay, I am gonna do it the other buttons. It just does not get worn much and that hurts. I really don't know what is the fate of this jacket. It has so many things that I'm proud of, but the reality is I am not wearing it. Yeah, and it's double-breasted. It did so much. <laughs> I don't know, man. Turning things around a little, the next section of my utilization stats goes to the items that I wore the most in the last six months. And so with this data, I don't even have to think about it. The data speaks for itself. Everybody in this section is getting upgraded to capsule wardrobe. I'm actually gonna make a new closet in this app and from there add all of those pieces. And this is gonna be helpful for a few reasons. Now inside the app, I can easily look up outfits with my most worn items. And so I can explore while sticking to my tried and true favorites, but also so from my perspective, this is the kind of guidance I need to shop more efficiently. If I'm buying a new item, but I can't picture it fitting with at least half of my capsule wardrobe, it's data proven that I'm probably just not gonna get around to wearing this item very much. Therefore, I'm not gonna get a high return on that money that I spent. And so it's not the best use of my money. Okay, so according to this, this is how I've been dressing in the last six months. For that last one, I think the pants must be in the laundry or something. Couldn't find them. I have some early evidence that this rule is actually really effective because there are two items I let myself buy during the last six months and both of them made it into my frequent OOTD list. I got this Rita Row cardigan. It's got a beautiful flower print. Because I sew on YouTube, I have been letting myself buy knit items. Because of the baggy fit and the crop length, I find it works with a lot of the pant silhouettes that I own. And I got this really interesting tie-dye turtleneck from Paloma Wool. After a whole demonstration on how I might be banning myself from sewing turtlenecks, this one had a color scheme that fit in really well with the rest of my wardrobe, but also provided enough intrigue to feel artsy and fun. I guess that's a similar case with this. I've been trying to move into some more fun prints. Next steps. I'm gonna be swapping out my really wintry items and putting them in storage and then bringing in some of my more summery things. Anything that did not get worn much this season will get stored separately. So I can pull it out in the autumn and probably do a cute little closet sale or something on my Instagram. You can follow at with Wendy if you wanna be in the know on those closet sales. To continue the data experiment, I'm gonna upload my entire summer wardrobe to a closet. My summer wardrobe is definitely a bit more refined because two, two years ago, I think I was like 40 weeks due with Marla and I managed to post some summer things for a closet sale, so I already did a bit of a cleanup. So that means that this experiment has definitely been rewarding enough that I want to continue to do it for one more season. If you've been thinking about making any of these types of improvements to your wardrobe, I definitely think a closet is worth checking out. Don't forget to open the description to see the link for Birch Living. Thank you so much, Birch Living, for sponsoring this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, unless this is the only type of video you're interested in, in which case I'll see you in six months. Bye-bye. Thank you.